Hey, this time around, I wanted to spend a few minutes on the new stuff that Adobe added to the 2019 version of Photoshop CC. As usual, I'm a little late to the party since these updates came out a while back. So you can already find a lot of videos on YouTube about them. But I decided to go over them anyway in case you haven't seen them or would like to hear my specific thoughts and suggestions. Instead of covering them all in one longer video, I'm breaking it up into four separate short ones. This way you can choose to watch them all or just go directly to the ones you're interested in learning about. All the videos are on my YouTube channel and I also have them grouped in this playlist right here. The new Photoshop features that I find useful in my work are the new Content Aware Fill, the Live Blend Mode Previews, the new History Undo Method, and the User Interface Size Preferences. In this first video, let's look at the most impressive feature, the new Content Aware Fill. Before the 2019 version, we could already do content aware healing and filling a few different ways. We could use the Spot Healing Brush tool, and it works very simply. You just size the brush, drag over the thing that you want to remove, and it does it. You could use the Lasso tool to draw a selection around something that you wanted to remove. And then you could go to Edit, Fill, or if you use the Tiki Actions panel, you can just click the Fill button, and that opens up the Fill dialog. You select Content Aware, click OK, and it fills the space. Third method is to use the Patch tool. Make sure it's set to Content Aware, and like the last method, you use the tool to draw a selection around what you want to patch or fill, but then you have a little more control because you can drag out and choose where you want to sample from. Now we have a brand new, more powerful Content Aware Fill tool. Like with the old Content Aware Fill, you start with the lasso tool and draw a selection around what it is that you want to patch or fill or remove. But now you go to the edit menu and select the new content aware fill. And this opens up the new content aware fill workspace. On the left, you see the area that you selected to fill and in green, you see the area that it will be sampling from. And in this window on the right, you get a preview of what that fill job is looking like. It's done a pretty good job to start, but you can work with it to make it even better. And that's what makes this more powerful. It takes a little more time than the other methods, but you have more options and more, uh, more flexibility for making adjustments. On the left, you have different tools to work with. This first tool allows you to control where it's going to be sampling from to do the filling. So for example, if I don't want it to sample from back here, because this information doesn't fit up here, I just make sure it's set to subtract, size my brush, and then I can just paint out any place I don't want it to sample from. And we can see over here that that updates and that already makes an improvement. I could also come in and say, don't sample from any of the areas that have other stakes or posts because I don't want any of that to be part of what's being sampled and also those leaves right there. And so that also makes an improvement. I can also see that it's sampling from this area. So I'm getting repeating stuff here that I don't want. So I can come in and remove that from what it's sampling from and that helps. I can also use the lasso tool that's inside the workspace if I want to maybe refine my selection. In this case, it's set to add, so I can just hold down the Alt or the Option key and that'll make it uh, subtract. So now I can draw in here and all around the outside and just closer to the post and what I'm doing is just making that selected area a little tighter to the thing I want to remove. And every time I make one of those adjustments, the fill that it's doing gets a little better. And we can keep working with that and keep refining it. I see a repeating pattern there. So let's take that out. Yeah, so looking really good. In this right column, we have some different uh, options. Uh, you can control the opacity of where it's showing uh, the sampling option. 
And you can also do things like adjust the color adaptation. And in this case, since all these colors are pretty similar, I don't really need it to do any color adaptation. So I'm gonna go ahead and say none. That improved it. But if I was sampling from areas that had different colors, uh, I might wanna turn up that uh, color adaptation. Rotation would be if I had something that was kind of a more round or spiraling sort of thing, like maybe a wagon wheel or um, maybe a spiral snail shell or something like that. But in this case, everything's vertical, so I don't want to do any rotation adaptation. Uh, if I was sampling from an area where things were further away or closer, I might want to check the scale option. But in this case, I think everything's pretty much in the same scale. And mirror would be if you want to do filling from something that's a mirror image. So for example, let's say like a pine tree and one side of the pine tree had a bunch of missing branches and a big gap in it. You could then fill by mirroring the other side of the pine tree so that it flipped over and filled in the gap. All right, once that's all done, you can output that fill and you have some choices. So you can fill to the layer that you're working from and that'll permanently destructively change those pixels and if you don't care, that's fine. Uh, you can do it on a complete duplicate layer or you can also have it output to a new layer which is often a good option. So let's pick that one and I'll click OK and we can see now that's been removed. It looks really good, did a better job than those other uh, options over here and because it's on its own separate layer, I can always get that post back if I decided I wanted it for some reason. So this new Content Aware Fill tool definitely takes a little more effort and time, but it certainly has more options and is more intelligent. And I think it certainly is a time saver over doing lots of intricate clone stamping, uh, which is what I often resort to when one of the old Content Aware Fill tools wasn't doing the trick. How valuable this feature is to you will depend on how often you remove objects from your images. Photoshop already had a good selection of content aware fill tools, but it's always nice to have additional options for getting the job done. Thanks for tuning in. And I always forget to mention that if you find my tutorials useful, like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next one.